Good evening, students. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. In last class, we discussed this question, right? I hope yes, everyone sir. got the answer. Yes, sir. Okay. So, shall we move today to the next question? Almost a similar one. Try to solve this one till everyone join. Uh, Vaishnavi ma'am, uh, please send the attendance sheet in the chat box. Uh, 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 Vaishnavi ma'am? Children, who is having attendance link? Share it in the chat box. Okay. So who will guide me? Who will help me? How to solve this question? Who will give the answer? The question is, if 1 plus sine theta divided by 1 minus sine theta is equal to 36 by 25, find cos theta plus sine theta divided by cos theta minus sine theta. Yes, any idea? So we can square both sides, I guess. Squaring both the sides. Okay, if you square also, you will get one square plus sine square theta plus two sine theta and this 36 will become again 36 square and square root though you can't find out because square root of one plus sine theta we don't know still we have not studied any other guesses 
Sir, here can we find the other uh, the triangle sides by doing substitutions? If if you want to find the triangle sides also, let me consider this one as angle theta. But exactly sine theta value is not given to me. Here it is given. Can we rationalize it? How we can we, we can get sine theta by uh, what is the value of sine theta? I think. Uh, how we can calculate sine theta value? Uh, sir, let me calculate it. I'm not so, do we rationalize it like uh, one plus huh? sine theta upon one minus sine theta? Uh, like okay, so rationalization, theta. yeah, with the like positive sine sin multiply and divide yes. one plus sine theta. If you multiply and divide, you will get one plus sine theta whole square. And in the denominator, one square uh, sorry, in the denominator, uh, one square minus sine square theta, you will get now later you can remove the square yes uh, you can try by that method i have not tried but you may get the answer okay uh, i will tell you one simple method how to solve such questions uh, listen carefully first uh, what is given question it's not possible for you to directly find theta so what we will do we will first do cross multiplication Cross multiplication. If you do, you will I got sine theta is equal to uh, nine by sixty one. Sine theta is equal, is equal to, to nine, nine by sixty one. Sixteen. Okay, we will see whether our answer is right or wrong. Okay, so if you multiply twenty five into one plus sine theta is equal to thirty six into one minus sine theta. Okay, do multiplication. Twenty five ones are twenty five plus twenty five. Sine theta is equal to thirty six minus thirty six into sine theta is thirty six sine theta. Okay. Now, once you do simplification, twenty five and thirty six. If you take this twenty five towards the right and this thirty six minus sine theta towards the left, what you will get? Twenty five sine theta plus thirty six sine theta is equal to Yes. Sixty-one sine theta is equal to thirty-six minus twenty-five. Twenty-five plus thirty-six plus or twenty thirty-six minus twenty-five, right? Yeah, minus. Minus negative. Yeah, negative sign we will get. Thirty-six minus twenty-five. If you add both, twenty-five plus thirty-six, you will get sixty-one. Sine theta is equal to after subtraction thirty six minus twenty five eleven sir minus oh, eleven. Uh, 11, eleven eleven okay here you did mistake oh it's a slightly calculation mistake yes don't do that small small mistake you will lose your marks yeah but your answer is exactly correct what you said so you yes. did by this method only or any other yes method? sir this only this same method very good children where to use such methods here both the sides I am having sine theta. That time you can go with the cross multiplication. But if I'm having one side sine theta, second side cos theta, then you will not get the answer by doing cross multiplication. Remember this one, okay? So both the sides sine theta, sine theta is there, and right hand side if you are having numbers, you can go ahead with the cross multiplication method to find exactly the sine theta value. Now you know sine theta. Sine theta is 11 by 36. So here is my right angle triangle. Let me consider this side as theta. So sine theta is nothing but what opposite by what hypotenuse. So opposite is eleven. Hypotenuse is sixty one. Just find out this base. How much you will get? If I consider this is as triangle ABC. Base AB BC is equal to. So it's sixty. 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 Six zero. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very it good. is coming in decimals, I think. Decimals. No, sir. It will be sixty one into sixty one. It is three seven two one minus one twenty one. Oh, sorry. I added addition. Okay. 
plus uh, this is x square subtraction you should do 61 whole square how much we will get 3721 3721 minus 121 is equal to x square to subtract you will get uh, 3600 so 3600 3600 yes is equal to x square therefore x is equal to 60 very good right answer now all the three sides of triangles we know so easily you can find out the cos theta sin theta cos theta sin theta just do addition and subtraction you will get the answer okay so cos theta how much you will get cos theta is equal to 60 by 61 60 by 61 very good and what about sin theta uh, 11 by 61 11 by 61 right so any doubt children in this now just simplification is needed that much if you do you will get the answer do you have any doubts yes, sir. 17 by 49 17 by 49 okay final answer the so final 71 answer. 71 by 49 yes, 71 by 49 okay very good 71 by 49 is the correct answer final answer okay this simplification you can do shall i move to the next question yes sir Okay, good. Just a minute. I'll give you the screen. Okay, next. Here comes your next question. If sine alpha is equal to 15 by 17 and cos beta is equal to 12 by 13, then find sine alpha cos beta is equal to cos alpha sine beta. Actually, I think it is plus addition is there. Here plus sign is this, not equal to. And here cos alpha, cos beta minus sin alpha, sin beta. So these aren't in the same triangle, right? The angle theta and that, that is important. Uh, yeah, in last class I told you in one triangle, one side we will take uh, alpha, second side we will take here we will take angle A, here we will take angle B. Okay, but here just see the values. Both will fit in one triangle. Think, think, and show. Or maybe it's different. Yes, very good. Both are different.
sir but in triangle one uh, the the alpha one we can't find the base because it it won't yeah. it's you, not you a perfect see square here. see here the given sine of alpha is equal to 15 by 17 sin theta value to be no sin theta is nothing but what opposite by hypotenuse correct so yes, sin sir. alpha opposite side is given 15 hypotenuse is given 70 adjacent you need to find out by using which theorem yes sir i pythagoras. i plus theorem yes sir okay. using pythagoras theorem find out the adjacent how much we get children hypotenuse sorry adjacent base eight eight we will get okay very good now here cos beta cos beta formula we know adjacent divided by hypotenuse adjacent is 12 hypotenuse is 13 how much we will get opposite side here so it's 5 5 okay 5 12 13 169 144 24. so in 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 the exam we can directly write uh, we don't need to find it right we can directly write uh, pythagoras triplets yeah, they, this if simple are there directly also you can write, yes. but uh, write one or two steps because in the examination the answer sheet you will not get like a, a portrait. You will get like landscape. Yes, sir. The, the, I I think you have seen the board exam sheets. Yes, we have written yes. in that. Yeah. yeah, if you have written, then you will get an idea. In the landscape sheet, uh, take a one third of the part or one fourth of the part you reserve for the rough work and remaining three fourth of the part you do simplification. So in yes. that rough work, one step at least you write using okay. Pythagoras. So the evaluator will get to know that you have, you have used here the Pythagoras. Yes. Sir. I told you in my last class, it's totally depends on the mindset of the evaluator. Okay, so better go with the safety. Okay. Now, children, what is sine alpha value? Sine alpha so is 15 equal to by 17. 15 by 17. Very good. And uh, sine of beta is equal to? 15 by 30. 5 by 30. 5 by 30. 5 by 30. Okay. 5 divided by 30. And cos alpha is equal to? 8 by 17. 8 by 17 and cos beta is equal to 12 by 30. 12 by 30. Okay. So this value is there. Directly you substitute here and simplify. You will get the answer. What is the first answer? Sir, 220 Sir, by 220. 220 by 220. 220 divided by 221. 225. Sir, no, 221. Sir, 221. 221. Okay. And second answer? Currently doing. Okay. So, those who are having doubt, you can raise your hand. I will solve it. I thought only simplification is there. This part you can do. So, I left it like that. If you have small doubt also, you can raise your hand. I will do it simplification. And Arjun, you, you have doubt? Second one? Yes, sir. But I thought I out okay. so calculation time. Calculation, you have doubt? Okay, just a minute. I, I, will, I will show you. Uh, cos alpha value to be no, it's how much? A second one I am doing, Arjun, now. 8 by 17 into uh, cos alpha is 8 by 17. And what about cos beta? Cos beta is 12 by 30 minus sin alpha. Sin alpha is 15 by 17 into sin beta, 5 by 13. Okay. I'll multiply both. 8 twelves are 12 eights are. How much? 96, sir. 96 divided by 17 Two into one. 30. How much? 2 to 1, sir. 221 minus 15 fives are? 75, sir. 75. 17 into 13 again, 221. 
Next question. Here one triangle is given PQR, it's right angle at Q. So ratios are given. You need to find out the values. Yes, Arjun is raising his hand. So first I will draw the right angle triangle here. This is P, Q and R. So where is it is right angle? Here at Q, it's right angle at Q. So ratio P, Q is and uh, P, R. P, Q and P, R is given. The ratio is how much? 1 is to 3. So how to write here? Uh, so can't we just directly write 1 is to 3? Only 1, 3, 1 and 3. Yeah, yeah. The directly also you can write or else you can take 1x into 3x. That is better. Okay. Gitanjali. You, how you are solving this, sir? The hypotenuse. Okay. Yeah. You what value asked. you took, Gitanjali? It's not audible. Not audible to Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. How to solve this sum now? Uh, so actually, I have taken the ratio P as it is given that PQ is a, is a, in ratio yeah. one, and one. QR sorry PQ is three. P P R uh, PQ is one, PQ and PR is three. PR is three. Very good. So you took only one or one X. So I took only one. Only one. Okay. This hypotenuse you got three. Then find out this value also. No problem. So the value is two root two. Two root two. I think eight you got the answer. Okay. So two root two. Correct. Square root of eight or two root two. Right answer. Now just go on substituting here. Tan r. Here also tan r. Tan square r. R r. But here p is given. Angle p. In this question, angle p is given. So in, in these two, first and second main, you will consider this angle r as a theta. So if R is the angle, then which side is opposite? This side will be opposite side. This one is adjacent side. And this side is hypotenuse. Okay. So first I will write about what is tan R value. Tan R is equal to opposite by adjacent. So that is nothing but 1 divided by 2 root 2. Uh, so which one you want me to solve? First one or second one? So you can go on second. First one is second. very easy. Okay. Second one. So second one values are 1 minus tan square of r is there. So tan r is 1 by root 2, 1 by 2 root 2 whole square divided by. 
1 plus again same 1 by 2 root 2 whole square. If you simplify 1 minus squaring, 1 square is 1 only, 2 square you get 4 and this square root is there, that also you should square. square. Square root of 2 whole square is nothing but 2 whole divided by same thing you will get 1 divided by 4 into 2. Now, once you simplify 1 minus 1 by 8 divided by 1 plus 1 by 8, further simplification, LCM you find out 8 minus 1, 7 by 8, whole divided by 8 plus 1, 9 by 8, 8, 8 gets cancelled. 7 by 9, sir. 7 by 9 is the final answer. Okay. Sir, and the answer of the first one, what is it? First answer, who will say? What is the first answer? Sir, I got it as 8 divided by, eight divided by 9 root 2. 8 divided by? 9 root 2. 9 root 2. Okay. Any so other? My answer is uh, 1 by 3. 1 by 3. Okay. Different, different answers. Okay. I, I will do the first one also. Just a minute. The second one you understood? No? Yes. Okay. okay. So tan r value first I will write tan r is equal to uh, opposite that is one so, one divided by two root two. Okay. Now here two r is given so two into one divided by two root two whole divided by. 1 plus 1 by 2 root 2 whole square, right? So now these two, these two gets cancelled because both are in multiplication. So in the numerator, what is left? 1 by root 2. And what about in the denominator? If you square, you will get 1 plus 1 by squaring. Just now we did 2 square will become 4 and square root of 2 will become 2. So 4 twos are 8. Directly I will write 8. Further simplification. One nine by, by four, sir. Nine by four answer. And here eight plus uh, eight ones are one eight are eight plus one nine. Nine by eight you will get. So if you take a reciprocal of eight, you will get eight. Okay, I I will write that step one by root two into take reciprocal of this. You will get eight by nine. So that is nothing but 1 into 8 is 8 divided by 9 square root of 2. Got it? So this is your final answer. 8 divided by 9 root. Correct answer. Okay. Ha. But while solving the third one, you will take the same results. 1 by 2 root 2 only tan value. What values you will take for tan p? Sir, tan p is 2 root 2 by 1. 2 root 2 by 1. Very good. So that is nothing but 2 root 2 only. Okay. Listen here, children. While finding the tan p, So tan r I will keep here. Now this hypotenuse is fixed only, but opposite and adjacent will change. Now, here you are having angle theta. So this side will become opposite now, and this side will become adjacent. So tan of p is equal to opposite by adjacent. So that is nothing but 2 root 2 by 1. That is the you also you can write 2 root 2 only. Okay. If you substitute in this, 
you will get the answer. Yes, what answer you will get after solving? Yes, anyone got the answer? Yes. Your voice is breaking. Please repeat again. So now. Ah, uh, yeah, not exactly. So I don't know if it's correct. I got four root two by minus seven. Four root two divided by minus seven. Okay. Any other answer? Sir, two root two by seven. Two root two by seven. Okay. Two answers. Koyal. Any other answer? Suryansh, no. This two root two by seven. No, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Ranch, what is your answer? So, Ranch. Yes, sir. What answer you got? 4 root 2 minus 7. 4 root 2 by minus 7. Okay, uh, we will see this. We will solve this last third one also. So, given question is 4 root 2 by minus 7. That's the correct one. That's the correct one. Okay. Uh, once, uh, once again, I will solve it. So, tan of p value is uh, 2 root 2 whole divided by 1 minus tan square of p. That is 2 root 2 whole square. Once you simplify, 2 to the 4 root 2 divided by 1 minus 4 into 2. So the final line the correct answer is 4 root 2 divided by 4 to the 8. So minus 7 you will get. Okay. This is the right answer. So we will go to the next question. Okay. So uh, I hope you all understood how to solve the starting first exercise questions. Now we will discuss about ratios. So ratio chart is very, very important. I hope you all know it, but still once again, I will revise to you. So sine 0, 30 degree, 45 degrees, 60 degree and 90 degree. Okay. So sine zero is equal to zero. Zero. Sine 13? Half. Half. One by two. Okay. Half sine of 45? One by root two. One by root two. Three by root two. Root three by two. Root three by two. And sine of 90 degrees equal one. to one. One. Okay. And for cos, it's the same thing, but uh, in reverse direction. Reverse it. We have to reverse it. Yeah. Reverse it. One by root two. 1 by 2 and the last one is 0. Ha, here comes the tan. So how do you calculate the tan? Sine by, sign by cos. Very good. So this is a important formula also. If you divide sine theta divided by cos theta, you will get tan theta. Remember this. Okay, we will use it. And not only this, if you divide cos theta divided by sine theta, what will we get? So cot and cot, cot. cot theta. Very good. Cot theta is the right answer. Okay. So tan theta values I will write 0 by 1 is 0. Here both the 2, 2 will get cancelled in the denominator. So what is left? 1 by, one by root. And here completely 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 one. gets cancelled. One. 1 is left. One. Here also denominator. Root, root 3. 2 gets cancelled, uh, root 3 is left and not 1 defined. divided by infinity. 0 is infinity. not defined. Okay, not defined or infinity. Okay, you can do that. So similarly, the sine, so here cosecant we will get 
that is 0 by 1. Okay, because denominator nothing is there, so I wrote 1. If you take reciprocal of it, 0 by 1 is there, so it will become 1 by 0. 1 by 0 is what? Not defined. Not defined, Not defined. In denominator. And here 1 by 2 is there if two. you take reciprocal. Two. So you will get 2. Root yeah. Two. Root 2. Root 2. 2 by root 3. 2 by root 3. By root three. One. And last one is 1 by 1 is obviously 1. Next for cos. So the vice versa. So vice versa. Previous same. one. Yeah, the previous one wise. Same you can take reverse. Two by root one. 3. Or 2 by root 3, square root of 2, 2, and not this defined. is not defined. And for tan, uh, we will write cot. cot so the first one is not defined. No, no, no. Uh, 0 by 1 is there. If you take reciprocal, you will get not defined. And so we, can, we can just reverse tan from like 90 is uh -huh. 0. Yes. 1 by 1 is 1 only and here you will get 1 by root 3 by root 3 and last one is zero. Not defined there it will become 0 one. it's also like reverse reverse of tan like uh, we did for cos and sino similarly tan and cot so this chart is very important especially of the first three things first three are very 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 important and not only here in applications of trigonometry also we will use this first three. In that, especially this tan one, almost 70% of the questions, you will get either tan 30 or tan 60. These two values only you will get in while solving the applications of trigonometry. So remember, these two values are very, very important. Tan of 30 degree and tan of 60 degree. Tan 30 is 1 by root 3. Tan 60 is equal to root 3. Right? If you have any doubt, you can write in the examination. Once you get the answer sheet, in the last page, you can write this chart. It's at least for sine, cos, and tan. Then just turning the page, you can you will get on the exact values so that you can substitute. But better if you remember this all the values. Okay, if you are getting confused with that, you can write once a chart. And uh, if you if you are if you are facing difficulty to remember this chart, means the starting values 0, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2. Uh, there is one easy method also. Uh, if you want, I will tell you, or else it's not. It's not uh, so important. You can remember no, these values: zero, one by two, one by root two, yes, two, by two and one. Okay. Everyone is agree with me that you can remember these values. Sir, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so we will go to the next question, which is related to these values. I will keep it as it is. So next question depends on the ratios chart. Uh, and, uh, and one more thing uh, we discussed. Okay, so later I will tell you. First, we will solve a few questions. So here, what is given in the question? If theta value is given here, theta is 30 degree, then verify the following. Cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. This is the first question. Theta value, we know it's 30 degree. You need to find out and verify whether the LHS is equal to RHS or not. So in place of theta, if you substitute 30 degree, what answer you will get? Cos of 3 90. 30 degree is equal to 4 into cos cube of what 30 degree minus 3 sorry this is also cos of 30 degrees okay so cube you should do here only cube or after substituting the values you will cube it after substitution value very good and here multiplication you will do first or after substituting the values, you will multiply. Uh, after substituting value. Here, in the first case. This is case one. This is case two. And this is case three. Okay. Now, Send first. And 
directly first multiply the angles. Okay. In the first case, how many of you agree that I should multiply both the numbers first? Then I will substitute the values. How many of you agree with me? You can raise your hand. Yes, Priya. Yes, very good. Two students. What about others? You say that first I should three. Okay, good. I am saying I should multiply cos of three into thirty. I will get ninety degree. This is correct. How many of you say this is correct? Only three students. Four. Only four students feel, feel, feel that this is correct. Five. Okay. I think there is network issue. Slowly it's reaching. Chalo. And what about the remaining students? The remaining nine students are thinking that first we should substitute the values, then we will multiply. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. If first, if you multiply means, you know, cos of 30 degrees equal to root 3 by 2. You feel like... Uh, cos 3 into root 3 by 2. How many of you say this is the right answer? Just now what I have written. Please hand stop the, those who have raised already. Hand stop. How many of you are saying this is the right answer? Just now I have written this one. Are In second case, we will come. But children, this is the right answer. First, you should multiply. Yeah, because the answer should be in degrees. You should multiply the answer you will get in degrees. This is the right answer. And in second case, first I should cube the 30 degree or I should find the values of cos 30. Then I will cube. So first we should put the 30 degree and then cube it. Very good. First, I will substitute the values of 30 degree. Four, I will write as it is outside. Then I will substitute the values of cos 30 degree is uh, root 3 by 2 whole cube. Okay. And here minus. Here, first, I should do multiplication with 3, 3 into 30, or substitute the values of cos 30. Sir, so substitute the value of cos 30. Very good. Substitute the values of cos 30. That is uh, root 3 by 2. Okay. And later you multiply by 3. Here, this is there in product with 3, no? Uh, with the degrees. So directly we multiplied. But here the 3 was outside. So we kept it out only. First we have calculated the sign cos 30 degree. Later we will multiply. Okay. So now you substitute the values and simplify. Cos of 90 degree is equal to? Zero, sir. Zero. 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 If you simplify this one, how much you will get? Four is as it is. Three cube. Square root of three whole cube. So nine three, by three. Nine, nine by eight. Nine root three you will get. So not only nine. Because square root of three whole cube is nothing but root three into root three into root three. So three threes are nine. Okay. So nine, if you find out, okay. uh, so sorry, I have written there wrong. So find the square root of nine, you will get three root three, right? Three root three yes. divided by two cube is eight. Four ones are four twos are. So minus here also you simplify three root three divided by two. So three root three by two, three root three by two. If you subtract both, you will get zero. So LHS is, is equal to RHS. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Second one, you solve it now. Second question.
Simriti, Simriti, unmute your microphone. Sir, my second answer, second part answer is coming root three. Square root of three. Okay. Any other answers? Anagha. Anagha, what is your answer? And can mute your microphone. If you all keep your cameras on, sir, should be two root three. Two root three. Sir, I think. Okay. Sir, I have done. I got. So uh, I will just calculate the left hand side. Tan of sixty degree. Tan sixty is what? Root three. Root three. And here they said verify. Means it's confirmed that LHS is equal to RHS. If question comes like prove. Sir. Hey, yes. Sir, so, but in question they have given theta should be 30 degrees, right? Uh, theta 30 degree. So tan yes. of 2 into 30 two degree. Into 30. Yes, okay. sir. 2 into 30 is tan 60. Yes, sir. Tan 60. Tan 60 is root 3. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, so RHS side also, once you simplify, you will get a root 3 only. Okay. We'll go to the next yes, question. Yes, sir. I I'll didn't can, I didn't answer properly. Okay. Children, shall I go to the next question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This this one you can solve it. So here comes your next question. Think. Here theta is not given. You need to find out theta. Pair of linear equation with two variables. Sin theta, cos theta. Any clue? Any guesses? No, I think we should. Mm, nothing, sir. It uh, it can be done only in sin theta. If both are sin theta. But here you are having two, two options. Both the numerator and denominators are same only. Still, you can try. So, so we have to do that cross multiplication. So we can rationalize. Okay. And rationalization. Okay, the previous sum of what I did, no, the first one. I think in today's class, first sum, what we did, you try it with rationalization also. I don't know whether we will get the answer or no. I have not tried it. So we you won't see. get. I tried it. it we won't okay. get it. We will not get no. Okay. Then then go ahead with the cross multiplication. Here also, children, same thing. First, you should do the cross multiplication. Do cross multiplication and simplify. Okay, I will do. You just help me while doing simplification. So if you cross multiply square root of three plus of one into sine theta minus cos theta is equal to square root of three minus one into 
sin theta plus cos theta. So binomial multiplication, a root three, you should multiply with both sin and cos, square root of three, sin theta minus square root of three, cos theta. Later, you multiply with plus one, plus sin theta minus cos theta. So LHS part is over, RHS side. What you are having, square root of three into sin theta. So root three, sin theta plus uh, root three cos theta minus sin theta minus cos theta. Just a minute, huh? there is some issue with the pointer. So just take uh, this uh, square root of three sine theta towards the left hand side. This plus square root of sine theta minus square root of sine theta. Both will get cancelled, right? Yes, sir. So this two terms I can cancel here only. And here uh, you are having uh, squ minus square root of three cos theta. Here you are having. Now we can cancel cost minus cost theta and minus cost theta. Yeah, these two also you can cancel minus cost theta minus cost theta. But remaining things though you need to add. So what I will do, I will take a square root of three uh, to the right hand side. So square root of three cost theta to the right hand side. So it will become two times square root of three cost theta. Correct. Root three cost theta plus root three cost theta is. 2 root 3 cos theta and this minus sin theta uh, I will bring it to the left hand side so I will get left hand side 2 sin theta right anything else left no, no sir no no okay now later so sin theta to I will write here only is equal to this 2 I will take in the denominator so root 3 divided by 2 cos theta. So 2, 2 gets cancelled. But what is my question? Find the angle is 30. Very good. No, not 30. Just check. You are close to the answer. So sine by cos is tan and tan 30 is root 3. No. Oh, tan, tan 60 is root 3. Is root 3. Yes. Okay. So bring this cos to the left hand side. You will get sine theta divided by cos theta is equal to root 3 sine by cos is nothing but what that theta. is equal to root 3 so therefore theta is equal to 60 okay so this type of questions you may get in the mcq also so be careful while solving such questions any doubt in this no no Children, I hope you understood how to solve this one. Yes, sir. Okay. Shall I give you one homework question? Yes, sir. Some as a homework? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, you, you have science class. 
physics class. Just a minute. I will write here, please copy the question. And in tomorrow's class, we will solve a few more interesting, interesting questions, which are almost related to this. Uh, he, here, if angle theta is an acute angle, it's almost related to the questions which just now which we have solved. And the what is given here, you see, the given thing is, tan theta plus cot theta is equal to 2. You, what you need to find out, you need to find out tan raised to tan theta plus cot raised to tan theta. You should calculate. If theta is an acute angle, they have given theta is an acute angle. Only this much is given. You need to find out tan raised to tan theta plus cot raised to tan theta. Calculate this one and let me know the answer by tomorrow. Okay? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Rajesh Sharimam has joined. And madam, uh, one minute. I, I should send the link. Two minutes. You try to solve this, children. I think attendance sheet is uh, link is sent in the chat box. Children, please fill the attendance. Sorry, it's not. It's it's there in the group. Just check whether it is there in the group or please someone post it in the chat box. Sir, but every day the attendance link should be sent. The old link will not open, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I will speak with you, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Just a minute. Huh? Okay, children, now Rajeshwari ma'am will take the class. See you in the next class. Bye. Take care.
Thank you, sir, Barsa. Thank you, sir, Barsa. Thank you, sir. Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Ma okay, good evening, everyone. How are you? Fine, ma'am. Fine, okay. So, in the last class, we actually have stopped the class. Okay, anybody? In the last class, what I thought? I thought about the electric current, how the electric current flows, and we did some calculation how to find the current charge okay now today see us now we have know that in a conductor consider a conductor any uh, can take any copper wire of the metal wire okay so the electric current is a flow of electron it's a flow of electron are you with me everyone Yes, ma'am. Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is it clear? Is there any network issue? No, ma'am. Who is that? Ma'am, Hassani. What's your name? Okay. So here. So now, how the current flows now? Here, yes, we know that in a conductor, the current flow is nothing but the flow of electrons. Here, how the electrons flow? We know that here, if you take any cross section area, the number of charges flows. The number of charges flows, and we represent it by what? N. So the charge on an electron is what? How much? It's a zero. If you take any cross section here, the net flow of electrons in one direction and the other direction will be zero. How much it will be zero? So the number of electrons those are flowing in one direction and the number of electrons that are flowing from uh, right to left. So in particular cross section area it will be zero. So here to make the electron current flow so what actually we are connecting we are connecting conductor to a pulse what actually we are doing we are to make a electric current to flow we are conducting what here we are conducting it to a pulse so in this pulse this is a positive terminal and this is a negative terminal okay so here what happens here whenever this conductor is connected to a cell Okay, here the cell, this is a positively charged terminal and this is a negatively charged terminal. So, here the one end of the conductor it becomes what? It becomes positively charged and another end of the conductor it becomes a negatively charged one. Okay, so therefore, what happens? The electrons they move from what? They move from here. From negative to positive terminal. They move from what? Negative to positive terminal with a small velocity, a small velocity, and that small velocity is called as drift velocity. What it is called? It is called as a drift velocity. What it is called? It is called as a drift velocity. So here, hence the current. So when these electrons they start to move. What happens here? So how the electrons move? Electrons move from negative terminal to a positive terminal. Because the charge on the electron is what? The charge on the electron is negative. So as here it is this terminal here, this end of the conductor is positively charged. So therefore, what happens? The electrons move from right to left means they are moving towards the positive terminal. Okay, so therefore, what happens here? Uh, with a small velocity, and that is called as a drift velocity. Okay, so here, next, we know that you have might have here conventional current. What is that? Conventional current. 
So what actually the conventional current here in the van dynamic for So what is that? That is a conventional current. So what actually the conventional current here? Consider the same metallic wire, okay, and which is connected to a cell. One end is connected to the positive terminal and another one is connected to a negative terminal. So here what happens? The convention current before when the electricity port was invented, here when the electricity was discovered, what they thought? They thought that whatever the current is flowing is due to what? It is due to the positive charge which is present on the which is present in the conductor. Okay. The electricity which is flowing through the conductor, it is assumed that it is due to the what? It is due to the positive charge in a metal or a positive charge in a conductor. So therefore, as they are positive charge means what? They must go where? As this end is positively charged and this one is negatively charged. So here what happens? The electric current flow in this direction from what? From positive to the negative terminal. From what? From positive to the negative terminal. So therefore, the, the direction of conventional current is what? It is in this direction. The direction of the conventional current is what? It is from positive to negative terminal. But actually the current flows in the conductor what? Actually the current flows in the conductor due to what? The flow of electrons. Actually the conductor is so. The current flowing in the conductor is what? It is due to the flow of electrons. So during that time, these subparticles, that is electrons, protons, these are not discovered. So therefore, the scientists, whoever it may be, they thought that whatever the current is flowing in a conductor, it is due to what? It is due to the positive charges which are present in a conductor. So therefore, the convention current, that is a convention current is always from what? From positive to negative terminal. See here, I have marked the, marked the arrow mark. Are you seeing it, everyone? Are you able to see the arrow mark here? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then what is the direction of the electrons now? So the direction of the electrons here from what? Negative to positive. Here, the electrons, actually the current is flowing in this direction. From what? Negative terminal to the positive terminal. Whereas, the convention current direction is what? From positive to negative terminal. Okay. So, here, when you see these two, that is the real current flow and the convention current flow, both are what? Both are in opposite direction. Both are Mama, in opposite. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I did Tell not me. understand what current meant uh, i am not listening you clearly mom what conventional current means i did not understand current, uh, yeah, okay, okay. conventional current is means what so when the uh, electricity was discovered when the electricity was discovered so at that time we uh, the scientists they did not know about the sub particles of the atom they did not know about the sub particles of the atom so what are the sub particles those are what? Electrons. Okay. Then another one is protons. What are those? Electrons, protons and the neutrons. Right. So we know that here, these protons, they have a positive charge and electrons, they have a negative charge. So before discovering these electrons and the protons, the scientists, they assume that whatever the electric current flowing in a conductor, Whatever the electric current flowing in the conductor, it is due to what? It is due to the positive charges which are present in the conductor. The positive charges which are present in the conductor. Okay. So then they don't know about the electrons, protons and the neutrons. What they thought? They must be, the positive charge must be present in the conductor. So these positive charges, they are able to carry a current. These positive charges, they are able, able to carry a current. 
so therefore according to them so if it is a positive charge means what what must the we know that what are the properties of charges unlike properties are attract each other so if there is a positive charges are present then they must go at which terminal they must go at the negative end of the conductor right getting Hello? yes ma'am yes okay. ma'am ma okay so as these are positive uh, as these are positively charged ones so they must go to what they must go to the negative terminal so the current huh? so the current flow which from the positive terminal to the negative terminal is known as a conventional current is known as a conventional current so here understood now yes are you clear now yes ma'am yes ma'am ma'am so conventional exists or is just like the thought that would uh, that would be happening yeah, they thought it actually they thought it but whenever the when the these sub particles are discovered that is electrons protons and discover neutrons are discovered then they come to know that the protons and neutrons are they are bonded in the nucleus so they don't have a they they cannot move freely so when you see the atomic structure of a, any atom which are the which are revolving which are in motion only the electrons are in motion okay only the electrons are in motion so therefore whatever the current flows it is due to what it is due to the presence of the electrons okay it is due to the presence of the electrons but not by the protons understood so now yes, as the invention is made then we can know that the current is flowing what the current flowing the the charge carrier the what is the current current is nothing but according to the definition in the first part we have uh, we have come to know that the flow of electrons is called as current right the flow of electrons is called current so therefore when these sub particles are discovered we come to they came to know that protons and neutrons they are bonded to each other in the nucleus only the free particles which are the free sub particles in the atom these are the electrons so as the electrons have the which type of the charge they have the negative charge on them so therefore whatever the current flowing in the conductor is due to what is due to the electrons the free electrons which are present in the conductor understood yes ma'am okay is there any doubt is there any doubt no ma'am no ma'am okay. okay so actually the conventional current is for the conventional current is the it is the current which is flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal of a conductor actually the conventional current is for the conventional current is the current okay which is carried by the positive charge is carried by the positive charge and it flows from positive to the negative terminal so they put the direction of the conventional current is always the reverse of the real current the real current is what is due to the movement of the electrons but the conventional current direction is they have assumed that it was assumed so they put it from a positive terminal to the negative terminal Still, we whenever we draw the circuits and all those things, we are actually showing what we are showing this aroma. These aromas they represent what they represent the convention current because it was from since from the when the electricity was discovered since that time the thing is used. So therefore, today now also we are using what we are using the same concept. We are showing in the circuit the direction of the current in the circuit. it is always what it is always the convention current but we know that whatever the current is flowing in the conductor it is from the electron got it got it everyone yes ma'am okay is there any doubt are you getting my teaching are you understanding what i am teaching now everyone please answer me yes ma'am yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. This concept have you cleared? Uh, uh, is it clear for you? 
what is the direction of the conventional current and what is the direction of the real current is it clear for you yes ma'am is there any doubt yes ma'am no ma'am no ma'am okay are you happy about my teaching or not are you getting the happy. concept huh are you getting the concept what actually i am teaching you because this electricity lesson is very important so that's why i am telling you okay in physics hardly you have a five lessons okay so therefore this is a important lesson for you that's why i'm asking you whatever i'm teaching are you clear are you getting the concept no clearly if you have any doubts you can ask me please you have any doubts no ma'am no okay no ma'am okay. now we will go to what we will go to the electric circuit now the what is the next concept that is the electric circuit in the previous uh, this one have you studied once uh, any teacher has taught you so now electric circuit so what is electric circuit here you might have did some uh, simple experiments during the your uh, that is the primary class you know, when you are in studying 6th and 7th thing 7th standard have you did we have taken one uh, this one a cell and you have took some small bulb and taking the two wires have you tried uh, to glow the bulb anybody have you did this experiment you have yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. Yes, ah, okay. Ah, so see here. What actually you are doing is that if the one cell here, you took the one cell and you have took the two wires, and these two wires are connected with the ah uh, some uh, small bulb. Okay, can you connect it this one to the cell? What happens? This bulb will glow. If you remove this wire from any one terminal of the cell, then the bulb will get off. So this is an example for what? This is an example for us. simple electric circuit okay this is example for what this is example for the simple electric circuit so that has, then means what is the meaning of the electric circuit then so electric circuit is a closed conducting path it is a closed conducting path constituting a source of electric energy constituting a source of electric energy okay constituting a source of electric energy okay that is a either it may be a cell or a battery and a device or a element okay say any electric bulb it is a device or you can say it is a bulb also a bulb okay utilizing the electric energy so electric circuit is nothing but is a closed conducting path in which we are using one source of electric energy and we are using some bulb or a device which uses the electric energy so it's a closed conducting path why you are i'm telling it's a closed conducting path means whenever this electric source uh, source is connected to the bulb it must glow if you have used any device yeah i have used the bulb so it must glow if you use a mixer then what happens if there is any closed conducting path means if you run the mixer then it should run if you switch on the mixer then it should run okay so any device it may be it may be a bulb or it may be any come mobile or whatever it may be so here actually in electric field we call it as a load we call it as a load we call it as a load okay now in electric circuit we have two types of circuit one is a open circuit and another one is closed circuit in electric circuit we have two types one is a open circuit and another one is a closed circuit another one is what the closed circuit so what is the meaning of the open electric circuit see here what is the meaning of the open electric circuit so electric circuit to which an electric current flows so here an electric circuit in which no electric current flows through the circuit so any electric circuit in which no electric current flows so such circuit are called as open 
electric circuit if in any circuit if there is no current flows if there is no conduction of the current if there is no flow of the current then such circuit is called as open circuit so an electric circuit where current flows where current flows so such circuit are called as closed circuit so such circuit are closed called as called as closed circuit for example here Here I have drawn the two circuits. Let, let it be circuit A and let it be circuit B. So here, see what what all I have to do. I have used the circuit, which is the switch, ammeter, and a bulb. See here, here I have not I have switched off. I I put the switch off. I put the switch off. So what happens here? Whatever the electric current flows, so it is not it is. The circuit is not completing. When we hear what the current flows up to till this much, but it is not actually reaching the negative terminal. So therefore, what happens? As there is no uh, complete conduction path, so therefore the bulb doesn't glow. Okay. Here in the C, in the diagram B. Okay. Here the switch represented by the letter K. Okay. I represent it by the letter K. Now. I on the switch. So what happens now? The current starts to flow here, and it, it also flow through the bulb and next ammeter. Then what happens as the as the switch is on? It comes here and it comes to the negative terminal. So the conducting path is it closed or open now? Is it closed or open? Hello. The conducting path is closed or open closed. now? Closed. It's a Mom, flow. It's okay. As the switch is on here, as the switch is on, so therefore, what happens here? The conducting path is closed. So therefore, what happens? The current flows through the, the bulb blows. Yes, and the bulb blows. So this is called as a closed electric circuit. This is called as a closed electric circuit, and this one here we can call it as a open electric circuit. Means here the current is not flowing, so hence there there is no current, so the bulb doesn't glow. So therefore, it is called as a open electric circuit. Understood? Understood, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, the next concept is now we have understood what is the convention current and how actually the current flows in a conductor. And what is the meaning of the electric circuit? And what are the two types of the electric circuit? Till this much, the concept is clear for you, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now the next concept is potential. Okay. The next concept is potential. So the next one, electric potential and potential difference. The next concept is electric potential and potential difference. So I simply write it as a PD, potential difference, electric potential and potential difference. So here, what is the meaning of the electric potential then? Here. What is the electric field? Anybody know? 
Anybody know what is the electric field? Anyone? Will you answer me? What is the electric field? In the first class, I talked. Ma'am, what was the question? What is the electric field? Anybody? I have taught in the first class. What is the electric field? Here, yeah, by seeing this, you can define now. Ma'am, the flow of current. Flow of current, sir. I'm telling you. Flow of... Field. Achha. Field, I'm telling you. Field, field is what? The space or the region around the charge. Okay. The space or the region around the charge is called as an electric field. Okay. Are you seeing this diagram now? Are you able to see this diagram? Yes, ma'am. So here, the space around here, what is the charge here? The charge is Q. Here I represent it by the dot. So this is the charge Q. So the space around this charge, the space around this charge is called as an electric field. What it is called? Electric field. Okay. So when the unique positive charge, so here in this electric field, I have put a unique, unique positive charge. Okay. So in electric field, so therefore what happens? If you get an, any another electric charge having the positive charge itself, if you take any positive charge, that is I represent it by here, a small q, are you able to see? Here, or a light here. I have taken another charge, that is, a, that is also plus q. Okay, so what happens if I brought this electric charge near this charge, that is in the this electric field here also have a positive charge and I am bringing another positive charge into this electric field. So what happens here? What happens this part? What happens for this my, uh, small Q that is another positive charge? It experiences the what? It experiences the repulsion force. Right? Because both are what? Both are the positive charges. So like charges what? They what? They are repel each other. So therefore, whenever I brought, whenever I brought another positive charge near this electric field, it experiences a repulsion force. It experiences a repulsion force or it, uh, it, it depends by this one or we can say that it gets repelled by the another positive charge which is present in the electric field. So therefore, what happens here? You should have to do some work done. Means you have to do some work so that to bring this positive charge, to bring this positive charge from infinity to in the electric field. You have to do some work to bring here what? To bring in this electric field, this positive charge. Okay, this positive charge. So this work done, this work done, that is this work done per unit charge. This work done per unit charge. This work done per unit charge, it is called as an electric potential. What it is called? Electric potential. Got it? Shall I repeat it? Shall I repeat it once again? Here. What is the electric field? The region or the space around a charge is called as an electric field. A region or a space around a charge is called as an electric field. So here, now I represented this electric field. This is an electric field. And here I have done one positive charge. Okay, one positive charge. And I have represented by the letter capital Q. So what, what I do? I want to bring, I want to bring another positive charge and I represent it by the small letter Q. I want to bring this plus positive charge in this electric field. But and both have the same charges, both have the same kind of charge, that is both have the plus charge or the positive charge. 
by the property of the charge, what happens? They repel each other. So to bring this positive charge into this electric field, so I have to do some work on it. Well, I have to I have to do some work on it. So this work done per unit charge. Here I have taken what one coulomb of charge. Here I have taken what one coulomb of charge. So the work done per unit charge, the work done per unit charge, it is called as an electric potential. What it is called? Electric potential. And this electric potential is represented by the letter what? B. The electric potential, it is represented by what? It is represented by the letter V. Okay. So here, then how we can define the electric potential? Electric potential at a point in an electric field is defined as the work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to the that point in an electric field. So from infinity to any point, the electric field. So to do, we have to do some work done. So this work done for unit charge is called as an electric potential. What it is called? Electric potential. So therefore, and it is represented by letter what? Is represented by the letter V. So therefore, according to the definition, V can be described as work done per unit charge. That is work done per unit charge. So I can represent it. V is equals to what? W by Q. V is equals to what? W by Q. Where W represents what? Work done. And Q is nothing but it's a charge. And the SI is of the potential for the force. The SI rate of the electric potential is what? It's a force. Okay, and it's a so the SI, uh, SI unit of a potential is what? It's a force and it is represented by the letter V. Okay, now. So then how we can define one volt now? How we can define the one volt now? Anybody? See here, here work done by charge, it can also, we can write V is equal to W bar. See here, we can also write it as Work then what is the unit for the work? It's a joule. Okay. So the work, the unit for the work then is what the joule and the unit of the joule. Coulomb. So therefore, V can be represented by what? Joule divided by coulomb. Okay. So then what? For one volt, how we can define the one volt? How we can define the one volt? We say that the, the electric potential is said to be one volt if one joule of work, work is done in moving one coulomb of charge. In doing one coulomb of charge from infinity to the uh, infinity to the point in a electric field. So how we can define the one volt? Uh, one volt, one volt can be defined as a one joule of work should be done to move a one coulomb of charge from infinity to a point in a electric field. Then that is called as a one volt. Then that is called as a one volt. Okay. So here the small units of electric stations are what? Millivolt. Those are the millivolt and it is Mv. Millivolts means what? 10 to the power of minus 3 volts. And next thing is the microvolts. So, microvolts. What is the microvolts? Microvolts means what? It is 10 to the power of minus 6 volts. Microvolts means what? 10 to the power of minus 6. Milli means always it is 10 to the power of minus 3. Micro means what? It is 10 to the power of minus 6. So these are the smaller units to measure what? These are the smaller units to measure the electric potential. Then larger unit. What can be the larger unit then? If milli and micro are the smaller units, then what can be the larger unit? Anybody? After gram, what we have? They have a kilo, no? So like that here, the larger unit, one kilowatt. 
the larger limit is 1 kilo volt. So, 1 kilo volt is nothing but 10 to the power of 3 volt. Okay, next is 1 mega volt. 1 mega volt. So, mega means what? 10 to the power of 6 ohm. Okay, so the larger units to measure the electric potential is what? 1 kilo volt that is equals to what? 10 to the power of 3 volts and here 1 mega volt another limit which is used for measuring the larger potential that is a mega volt. Mega volt is nothing but 10 to the power of 6 volts. Got it? Okay, understood? And here the electric potential is a stellar quantity. So which type of quantity? It's a stellar quantity. Okay. So now have you understood what is the electric potential, everyone? Understood here? Children, have you yes, understood? Ma yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, what is the next concept we have? That is the electric potential difference. So that is the next concept is what? Potential difference. So what is the potential difference is what? There must be some difference in the electric potential. So then we can say that it is a electric potential difference. Okay. So here to understand the electric potential difference. So now here to understand the electric potential difference, first we'll uh, we do so we understand some concepts here. Now take a vessel, okay, it has a two arm. It has a two arm, take a vessel, it has a two arm, this is the arm A, and next this one is the arm B. Okay, now this vessel it has a wall here, it has a wall. This one is the wall. Okay, so in this, in this vessel, I have filled the water. I have filled the water. I have filled the water. So, are you able to see here? The water level in the arm A is more when compared to the water level in the arm B. Are you able to see it? Okay. So, here the water level in the arm A is more when compared to the water level in the arm B. And here is the flow of water direction. Here, as the water level is higher than the higher in arm A when compared to the water level in the arm B. So, where is the more pressure will be exerted on the bottom of the vessel? Either is it in the arm A or is it in the arm B? Where the more pressure is exerted on the bottom of the uh, vessel? Where? Whether it is in arm A or arm B? Anybody? Can you tell me? A. Yes, very good. So here, a. yeah, yes, very good. So here, the water pressure it is exerted by the water in, at the bottom of the vessel is higher in the arm A when compared to the arm B. Why it is? Because here, in the arm A, the water level is high. The water level is high. So as the water level increases, the direct the pressure also increase the water level is directly proportional to the pressure exerted by the water at the bottom so now what happens here here as i have kept the wall closed i have kept the wall closed so when i start the wall means what happens i have kept the wall closed now i open the wall so what happens here the water which is present in the arm a it starts to flow it starts to flow from A to B. So up to what? Up to which extent it will flow now? In the arm B, it will flow when the water level in both the arms should be equal. The water level in the both the arms should be equal. Right? So 
what happens here the water which is present in the rna is higher than compared to the previously the water in the arm b so there is a what there is a pressure difference in both the arms the pressure exerted by the rb is greater than the pressure exerted by the arm b so what so at that condition what i did i closed the valve so when i opened the valve what happened the water starts to flow from arm a to the arm b so till what extent it will flow here it will flow when the water level in both the arms is yes yes Mom, when equilibrium is formed, till it gets equilibrium equal. in both the uh, arms, the water will be equal. So when we when the water level in both the arms are equal, then the uh, flow of the water stops. So what we can conclude here from this? What we can conclude? What we can conclude here? Anybody? So here, the water flows. The water flows from higher pressure region to the lower pressure region so the water flows from higher pressure region to the lower pressure region means what here there is a pressure difference between rb and rb before before it is flowing there is a pressure difference between the what in the rb and the rb so this pressure difference the difference in this pressure it makes the water to flow from higher pressure region to the lower pressure region so what happens here then we can say that the water current has flowed right am i right the water current has been flowed so similarly in the same manner okay in the same manner the electrons are in a conductor or in a wire they flow from what one end to the in a wire consider This is a wire. Okay, here also the electrons flow from one end to the another end of the conductor or a wire when there is a electro when there is a potential difference. When there is a what? When there is a potential difference. So here, so how we can maintain this potential difference? Okay, now we have I have understood that the electrons they flow from higher potential to the lower potential region so how we can give this potential difference to this conductor or a wire we are using what we are using a cell or a battery to make the potential difference across the conductor or a wire to make a potential difference between the two ends of a conductor or a wire okay so here Understood. So here, so how the how this battery maintains this electric potential difference? How the battery maintains this electric potential difference? We know that the the cell it must be filled with some chemicals. So whatever the chemical reaction that is taking place in the battery, okay, the whatever the chemical we know that in the cell the chemicals are filled. So the these chemicals are doing their chemical reaction. so the chemical reaction which are taking place in the cell or a battery they may what they may they maintain the potential difference in the battery we know that there are two electrodes in the battery one is a positive terminal and another one is a negative terminal okay so this positive terminal is nothing but it has a higher potential the positive terminal is called as a higher potential okay and this negative terminal is called as a lower potential this negative terminal is called as a lower potential so therefore as there is a potential difference across this conductor okay there is a potential difference across this conductor means what one end of the conductor is connected to higher potential and another end of the conductor is connected to the lower potential so therefore there is a what there is a potential difference between these these two ends of the conductor so therefore what happens electrons flow from higher conductor higher potential region to the lower potential region so therefore here
So whatever the potential difference is given by what? It is given by the set. So the potential difference across any circuit or any conductor or any wire it is given by what? It is given by either using the cell or a battery or any electric source. Understood? Okay. So therefore, this is how the, uh, the electric potential is maintained. Still this much have you understood children? What is electric potential? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the electric potential is maintained across any conductor because it is only by the cell or a battery. Okay. So here the chemical reactions which are taking place in a cell, it causes, it causes the electric potential difference across the two ends of the conductor. Okay. Because the positive terminal of the battery is the higher potential, whereas the negative terminal of the battery is a lower potential. As there is a difference in their potential, so what happens here? The charges move from higher potential to the lower potential. So therefore, what? It constitutes the electric current. It constitutes the electric current. Okay. Now, how, then how we can define the electric potential difference? So electric potential difference between any points A and B is defined as the work done per unit charge in moving a unit positive charge from a point B to point A. So therefore, here, so electric potential difference is defined by delta T. So the electric potential difference between any two points, that is A and B, is defined as the work done per unit charge, moving the unit positive charge from point B to from point B to A. So therefore, here it is represented by delta V. The potential difference is represented by what? V A minus V. Where A is, is the point and B is also a point, and here, what is that? W by Q. What is that? W by Q. So, why in the pre, in, in first only have studied that uh, electric potential is what to bring the unit positive charge, some work has to be done on a unit positive charge to bring into a electric field. So, according to the definition. So the electric potential is what difference is means what to bring the unit positive charge from point B to point A. So therefore potential difference that is delta V is given by what V A minus V B that is nothing but what is the work done divided by the charge that is a Q. Okay. So then here the potential difference the potential difference it is also called as a voltage. What it is called? It is also called as a voltage. The potential difference, it is also called as a voltage. Understood? Okay. Still this much have you understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Now, so what is the unit for the potential difference? It's a force. What is that? It's a force and it is represented by the letter V. Okay. Understood? So, to measure the electric potential, the device used, what is the device? That is called as a voltmeter. What it is called? Voltmeter. To measure the potential difference across any two ends of a conductor or a wire, the device is used is what? It is called as a voltmeter. The device which is used to measure the electric potential is what? It is a voltmeter. So here, to measure the electric current, which device is used? Ammeter. Okay. To measure the current, we are using what? Ammeter. To measure the potential difference, we are using what? We are using the old meter. And this old meter, it is always connected in parallel with the circuit. Always it is connected in parallel with the circuit. See here, how it is connected then? I 
have used some uh, register here. So across this, it is connected parallelly with the circuit. This is parallelly with the circuit. So ammeter, it is always connected in series with the circuit, whereas the old meter is always connected in what? Is always connected in a parallel in voltage. Circuit. And is the ammeter is a low resistance device. Ammeter is a low resistance device because it, sh it, it should show the current flowing in the circuit. So therefore, the ammeter is a low resistance device, whereas the voltmeter is a high resistance device. Whereas the voltmeter is a high resistance device. So the ideal voltmeter which has the resistance is increasing. For an ideal old meter, the resistance is how much? It is a infinite. Understood? Okay. So, uh, still this much have you understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, today in the in the today class, we have yes. Anyone is uh, uh, somebody is asking question? Hello. <laughs> Hello. So in the today's class, we have learned about what is the potential, potential difference. Okay. Next, uh, the device which are using for measure the uh, uh, voltage. Okay. Then what are the unit is unit of the voltage? How one volt is defined. Okay. So whatever today I have taught, is it clear for you, everyone? Is it clear for you? I am asking you some question. I am asking you a question. Is it clear yes, for you? All of you have understood the concept or not? Please tell me. Please answer me. All of you have understood the concept or not? Yes, ma'am. Understood. Is there any doubt regarding the potential, potential difference? Anything? Is there any doubt? No, ma'am. No doubts? No doubts? Okay, so I want to uh, finish off the today's class. So tomorrow we will continue. Okay, if you have uh, any questions, please you can ask me. Do you have any questions? No questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, children. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, take care. Bye.